This is a printer, it's actually a Hewlett Packard 82143A peripheral printer and this is used with uh, the HP 41C. Now it would be useful to be able to emulate this and to do that the best way or in fact the only way really is to remove the or dump the ROM contents of whatever's controlling it. Now this has already been taken apart and uh, if I flip the board over so you can see you've got a printer mechanism here and then some electronics. Now this socket used to have an IC in it and it's a microcontroller. It's an M3870 by Mostec and it's got a, a mask ROM in there and that is what operates this printer. Now mask ROM chips normally you have to decap them because you can't get to the ROM. It's not possible to read. Now, now mask programmed ROMs you normally have to decap the chip. It's, it's usually not possible to get to the ROM contents without doing that. But it turns out on the M3870 family of ICs there's a pin called TEST and what you can do is you can actually use that to uh, dump the ROM contents. So if I move this out of the way, bring up a circuit diagram. So this is a circuit from um, Sean Riddle and uh, this is straight off his website and he's already dumped these chips but he hasn't dumped this printer I see, he's dumped um, various games. And uh, the way it works is, is fairly simple. You've got the 3870 chip under test here and there's some data lines which I'll go into later on and things going on um, because the chip is connected to a PIC and uh, Sean used an 18F4620. Uh, the important line though is this one called test. Now it turns out that if you apply different voltages to this test pin you can get the 3870 to do different things related to its ROM. Now the rest of the circuitry here is two regulators one which you set up and adjust to three and a half volts and one you set up and adjust to seven volts. Now seven volts is more than the supply of this IC but that's fine, it's designed to uh, handle that on this test pin. This is an analog switch, the 4066. That is just a way for the pick to select either three and a half volts on here or seven volts or leave it floating. Now if you put one of the voltages on here, I can't remember if it's three and a half or seven off the top of my head at the moment, but one of the voltages here, when you do that, you actually disconnect the ROM, the internal mask ROM from the data bus. Now that's useful because what you can then do is inject different instructions to the ones that are in the ROM into the processor and it will execute those instructions instead of the ones that are in the ROM. Now you inject them on port 5, I mean that's not particularly important, but you can inject instructions on port 5 and you can see what's on the data bus on port 4. Now you also drive the clock because that means you've got complete control over the cycles of the instructions that you're injecting. And you've also got a reset because you want to reset the, the uh, microcontroller and actually start it up in a nice clean state. There's a couple of lines here which are just controlling which voltage goes on the test pin. So this is this is pretty straightforward circuit. Now I didn't want to use a pick. Uh, I use Picos at the moment. So I had a look at this circuit and thought, well, I'll just build one up using uh, using a Pico. So there you go. I started building this one, so you've got the two voltage regulators and the two pots and you've got the socket for the uh, 3870, the device under test, and a Pico socket. Now if you look at this <laughs> circuit diagram, 
there's not a lot of, of wires on there so I sort of went well do I do a PCB or do I uh, build one up and I decided to build one up and uh, I got that far and then realized that there's eight lines there and eight lines there and a whole load of other wires that you need to uh, get things working around here and I decided that it would just take too long to wire it up um, so I did a PCB so that is is the same circuit it's um, it's got its own built-in DC DC converter because this requires a 9 volt input and I just wanted everything to run off USB which it does on here it runs off the USB of the Pico that's the device under test and that is uh, the device from the printer uh, the printer by the way is is I think destroyed by battery corrosion but I put a socket in there anyway and this is non-destructive so I can put that back in and, and attempt to repair it at some point in the future you've got the two 317s and their adjustment pots and circuits um, because I've got the Pico that runs off 3.3 volts this chip here requires 9 volt ish signals in order to drive its control inputs and the Pico can't supply that um, in fact the PIC can't supply it either but the PIC being a 5 volt device gets closer and it can actually handle the control lines so what I've actually had to do here is manually wire a couple of transistors in as a level shifter here that's just to get the thing to work um, so does it work? well it does work yes um, I had some problems with it um, I, I started by porting Sean's code from the PIC to the Pico and running it and it sort of worked but it was a bit a bit flaky, a bit dodgy and um, I think the reason for that was that the timings are slightly different on the PIC to the Pico. Now when you inject an instruction here not only does it have to be inverted because of the way that the circuitry is done but you also have to know what instruction you're injecting and its timing because you then have to clock and look at this strobe line which is requests from the 3870 for more data effectively you have to clock correctly for the instruction you've got keep an eye on the strobe and whenever the 3870 is asking for more data like operands for an instruction something like that you have to supply it at the right time and I think it was something to do with that timing that wasn't working out properly when I ported Sean's code so I started effectively almost started from scratch and I've got Pico code here which does all that you can you can add now you can because there's more memory space and it's programmed in C rather than assembler on the Pico I could I could do more elaborate things easily and um, now you have basically an array of instructions that you want to drive into the chip so I could change the way that the ROM was being dumped so Sean dumped it by uh, setting up a register inside this chip the uh, data counter with a DCI instruction which basically just sets an address that can then be pointed into the ROM so he set that address up and then he did a load from ROM instruction and monitored the data coming back from the ROM. So that's that's another sort of intricacy because when you set the instruction up you're disabling the ROM and then you run that instruction to set the address. Then the next instruction which is going to read the ROM and give you the data on port 4 that you're interested in, you have to do that with the ROM enabled. So you swap the voltage here and the ROM comes into life and you read that ROM byte. So out of the sort of five bytes that, that the processor is processing, four of them are done with the ROM disabled so that you can force instructions. And then the remaining cycle, and it's half the instruction because you still force the instruction in, the load memory LM instruction. But then you enable the ROM and read the ROM data out when it does the read using the address that was set up in the data counter. So that's, that's a fairly simple way of extracting the ROM. It turns out that the uh, LM instruction, as well as reading the ROM, it actually increments the data counter. So what you can do is just set the data counter up to zero and then do lots of LMs, turning the ROM enable on and off, depending on where the 
which half of the instruction you're doing of the LM and you can then read out the entire ROM. Now I was getting that to sort of work um, but it, it just didn't give reliable results and I wasn't entirely sure what was going on in Sean's code. So my code was a way for me to examine the, by cycle by cycle the instructions and actually look at the bus and see what was going on and from that I managed to get some code eventually where I can execute sort of arbitrary code sequences uh, instead of just those two instructions that Sean used. Um, that worked uh, but unfortunately I was still getting errors uh, when I read or when I read the ROM. It was, it was sort of an error every few hundred bytes so it wasn't very common but it did happen and of course if you're reading a 2k or 4k block of ROM you don't really know which bytes are right and which ones are wrong and it's, it's difficult to to work out how good your dump is and really you want a perfect dump. So I changed the code again to actually read every byte so I don't set the DCI up and then do lots of LMs I actually set the DCI read it and then set it and read it and repeat that sequence many times and uh, it's about 200 times I read each byte and only if all 200 read the same value do I say that's the value it's, it's very wasteful and inefficient but it doesn't matter because really you only want to run this program once and get that one dump and you're done uh, doing that it takes it takes a few minutes to actually dump it out but I do get a dump um, which matches one that um, Sean got. So what I used, I've got it here, what I used was this, I bought a chest machine which I knew that um, Sean had dumped and uh, took the chip out of here and it's a 3870 just like the printer. Uh, put a socket in there again so I can put it back as it did work that one and um, dumped it and I did get the same dump from the chess computer as Sean did apart from some bytes at the end which I think are unused bytes. Um, so I knew that my uh, my dumper was, was working. I then ran the board in this configuration with this chip here which is the printer chip and got a dump from that and um, it all works. So I'll start up the serial um, terminal, there's a serial terminal here and um, go through some of the options and so on and, and actually do a dump of that device. So I've got the ROM dumper set up uh, attached via USB to my serial, serial emulator here, Minicom, and th there's nothing really to see on the dumper, there's no lights or anything, it just sits there and does its thing. I press H I get a list of the commands and this is very much a, a device that is used just once to do a particular job and uh, I've just sort of basically hacked together the commands I needed to get the hardware up and running so you can see that I've got an AB and an F command there which set the test pins to various voltages and that's just to get the hardware up and running. Now I need to issue a command U before I actually do the dump. Um, that's just due to some problem with the code I've got that I haven't bothered to fix because I'm just going to use this once so I don't really care that I need to press U before I press S. So I'm going to do an uppercase S now and um, it says sweep the address. This actually does the dump. Um, that label is really left over from when I was bringing up the code. So if I do that you can see that that comes past. Now this is every byte in the ROM is being dumped here. So you can see the first byte, the address, will have been set to um, zero. And you can see that it's read that byte, what is it, 200 odd times. And they've come back as the same. So it knows that the first byte is seven zero. Same with the second, third, and it goes on like that right the way through the uh, 4k of ROM. Now you can see here that it's come to read this value. I'm not sure what address it is. This number over here isn't the address in the ROM, it's it's the count of um, which read it is that it's actually just done. And you can see that here 
it's decided that there was a mistake and I think it actually read 1.6 instead of 8.1. Now 1.6 turns out to be the LM instruction so I think there's some sort of timing problem where the data bus isn't um, either I'm reading on the wrong cycle or there's something not quite right internally in the chip with the data bus but 1.6 is the instruction that is executing here but anyway it's decided that it's got mostly 81 uh, but one of the values is different now I could have written some code which would go oh it's probably 81 there's only one value different but it's a lot simpler just to do the whole thing again and find that every value is the same and that value is 81 so that's what I did it's just simpler and you just carry on for the entire 4k of code now I think there's only 2k of code here but it's possible for the devices to have 4k in some um, incarnations of the 3870 so I did 4k and you can see most of the time it's fine it just comes up and reads correctly a lot of the time actually um, there's probably another one but if if I just dumped this I would have had one one byte there you go another byte that's different again it's a 16 so again the instruction has gone in there instead of the uh, ROM value it's almost like I failed to enable the uh, the ROM or something and uh, so on but I, I would never have known that this was the incorrect value in a dump of 2 or 4k bytes and so you can see over on the right hand side there'll be an error message which I can spot as we go through the entire ROM but it does take quite a few minutes to actually dump this um, quite a lot more than just doing it once which only takes a few milliseconds but yeah it's reading most of the values now correctly so it's very much a sort of edge condition that I've got there somewhere in the code or maybe the hardware and maybe that it's a hardware glitch which has caused the wrong value to be read so sometimes it's a different value you can see that some bits are missing and it's not actually uh, again that's a 16 so at the moment it seems to be just reading 16s as error bytes but uh, there we go back on let's have another look I think one just went past there yeah again that's a 16 so not sure maybe there's just a timing problem or a hardware problem with the test pin there I'll let that run through on time lapse Right, so that's finished and uh, you can see we've got the entire ROM dump here from uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right the way down to FFF. F. So uh, that's it, that's the dump and uh, I've done this as I said with the Boris and it came out with the same data as Sean's dump apart from the end. So that was sort of... Uh, down here this sort of area here now I think this might be RAM but I ran a bit of code to see if I could change these values and I can't maybe I got that wrong and it is actually RAM in that area uh, or maybe it's just unused data and Sean zeroed it out I'm not really sure but um, but yeah so uh, I think we've got a dump of the HP 143A printer 82143A printer um, microcontroller.